Yeah, okay. so make sure it, yeah. And, and so welcome everyone. We'll just make sure that. Um, okay, good. We're right at 12. Yep. And welcome everyone. And this uh, started out, if I might just say, this is Lynn Mayer. Uh, this originally started out, Joseph was going to be teaching our study group because the, the group down here in Colorado Springs clamors for endocrine information and clamors to have Joseph come and teach it and, and teach anything. And so uh, that was part of our new year arrangement to have Joseph come down a couple times, you know, a few times this year and teach it. And we were going to invite you all by Zoom. And then with the COVID uh, shutting everything down, we decided to just, we had to cancel our luncheon meeting and we decided to open it up to Zoom to all the heart sound recording owners and all the people in, in the territory in SP West. So um, we're just grateful and I've had a fun time this week with uh, Joseph uh, putting the PowerPoints together. So I hope you enjoy the day and um, I'll get quiet and let you hit record, Joseph. It's already on, so. Okay. Yep, because it says stop record, so it must be recording. Well, welcome everyone uh, to the uh, Colorado Springs Study Group uh, webinar and the uh, Heart Sound Recording webinar and we opened it up to the whole Standard Process West Territory, all seven states. That was a last minute thing, but I'm glad to see that some of you got it and could take the time today. I'm gonna to spend about an hour with you on the pituitary gland, uh, and, uh, and then we'll open it up for questions and answers. So throughout this time, if you have a question related to this topic, don't go off topic, let's stay focused on this. This is a lot of material. Uh, then you can put it in the chat box and we will field those questions in an hour, if I get through this in an hour. So this was a lecture, a series of lectures that I did about 10 years ago for uh, Mark Anderson and his territory, Standard Process West. They were teleconferences at that time and we have the blessing of now Zoom webinar and, uh, and the blessing of Lynn Mayer, who created the PowerPoints. So this would not have happened this way um, without Lynn. So you can thank her for that. She is, I, I can't do what I do <laughs> without her. So thank you, Lynn, for that. Um, I had done this series uh, because um, as you know, I have been, um, I've been working uh, teaching and using standard process, of course, um, for 48 years, uh, since 1972. So this would actually be my 49th year, I think. Um, and um, I, of course, was 20 years old then, and I was absolutely uh, taken back uh, as a young man, thinking about going to chiropractic school with Dr. Lee and his work with endocrinology. So I had, been, I had been studying the endocrine system in a more esoteric uh, stream of, of uh, work. And when I realized the depth uh, this man had related to the endocrine system, I, I said, this is for me. Plus I met Mark Anderson and he ran an endocardiograph on me. And that was it, that was it. That was it for me. So um, the endocrine system has been studied a long time. Uh, Dr. Harrower, Henry Harrower. Now he has a book. I don't know if you can get it through um, Celine River Press anymore. It is a tome. The book is about almost the thickness of mine. Uh, it's about uh, two inches thick called Practical Endocrinology. Henry Harrow was a medical doctor in Los Angeles who had his own hospital. He was working with doctors and the other organotherapists. So organotherapists are a range of practitioners that work specifically with glandulars, with uh, animal uh, substances, organs, uh, glands, and tissues. So um, and this was, uh, of course, in the, in the first uh, part of the 20th century, the early 1900s. Henry Harrower, by the way, died in 1953. Dr. Lee and Henry Harrower were great friends. 
And uh, Mark just told me yesterday, because I think he wanted to torture me, that back to school for doctors this year, which is September 19th and 20th, Denver, Colorado. And we all will be there, by the way, um, uh, in person. Um, he has some correspondence between Dr. Harrower and Dr. Lee that none of us, not even including me, have ever seen. So I'm like, Mark, I'm not going to sleep till September now. I want to know what these two guys were talking about. But Dr. Harrower was working with doctors all over the world. And this book, Practical End Endocrinology, that is so deep, it'll put you right to sleep. So if you have a, any sleeping uh, challenges, just get this book and start reading it. You'll, you'll fall right asleep. <laughs> But the information and what these organotherapists began to find using glandular substances is incredible. It's been lost. Now, why did this go away? Well, I, I can say it very quickly. It went away because of the development of drugs, insulin, thyroxin, and cortisol. cortisone. And that's why all of this research and knowledge and wisdom and great results disappeared, except for Dr. Lee and his work. Dr. Lee revolutionized the use of glandular therapy for this country. Unfortunately, not for the world because we don't sell our products. So, and Dr. Lee, of course, passed in 1967. And then uh, John Courtney came online he is now retired and passed away. And then Mark Anderson has taken over from that teaching this. And uh, of course, I am, uh, I am one, of, uh, one of Mark Anderson's uh, uh, protégés. He's been my mentor for many years. And so, um, and so we have uh, this series, which uh, I will do uh, every other month. Lynn has asked me to do it for the Colorado Study Group. So if you all wish to be on, you're most welcome to uh, the heart sound recording uh, individuals. And I would say that um, for those of you that are not on my webinars, I do teach a heart sound recording webinar on Tuesday and Thursday. So just connect with me. I can put you on that list. Um, it's eight o'clock in the morning mountain time and then 11 on Tuesday and 11 o'clock on Thursday. And you any of the standard process West uh, practitioners can be on this, even if they don't own a heart sound recorder. Now you cannot participate uh, other than asking questions in the chat box. Um, you can't participate because this is, uh, when you purchase a heart sound recorder, you get me for your rest of your life in relationship to the heart sound recorder. So practitioners that are on there that haven't purchased one can't chime in and ask questions. They anyone is certainly welcome to uh, text, uh, email a question, of course, and uh, talk to us or the mentors, any of the standard process mentors after that. So uh, as I say, when I began, it was obvious to me that um, the endocrine system was not only a great love of Dr. Lee's, but that was significant, very significant to the healing of humanity. Now, um, I, I gave one other lecture on the pineal gland a couple months ago, and we can send you the notes to that, though I don't like to give out notes unless you've heard the recording. Um, so maybe I can re-record that. Uh, a mentor without commentary is just simply a teacher giving information. A mentor is the one who truly shares their life experience. That's, that's the difference between a mentor and a teacher. It's not just knowledge. And so I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to mute everyone out, though it is very quiet. So Lynn must be doing that. And then uh, Lynn, of course, you can mute back in. Um, so we understand, I'm just gonna go through this very briefly uh, so I can get to the heart of our topic today. Of course, we know that the endocrine system is a grouping of seven ductless glands, that they are unique. 
because they don't have a duct. Now, you could say that the liver, as an example, could be an endocrine gland if it didn't have the common bile duct. And that would be true. Others you'll see from Dr. Lee and some of his writings and what he's shared with people uh, over the years, he considered the heart an endocrine gland. I'm gonna show you an article on that that is mind blowing. Uh, literally uh, incredible information that's come out um, recently, pretty recently. So these are glands, of course, for in internal secretion. So in other words, the network of the seven primary endocrine glands. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking the hypothalamus. And listen, I am teaching you what I know, what I have used, what has worked for me. Of course, there's a lot of other doctors and practitioners and teachers that teach other things about this. But I, um, and this relates to the hypothalamus gland, which I will get to. But Dr. Lee worked with the seven primary endocrine glands. And so that's what I teach, just so you know where I'm coming from with this. Um, and of course, they, from the time, time of conception, they begin to develop and shape the whole body. In fact, I have a quote that I did not put in here where Dr. Lee said, the pineal gland is the reason and the source of the development of the entire nervous system. How do you like that? So, and um, uh, that quote, if I can find it, I'll put it in the notes that, uh, that we, uh, I'll put it in the notes that uh, on the pineal, uh, from the pineal session. Um, now, of course, anatomically, they are separate. They are functionally linked um, and made up of a, uh, a chemical network with signals, hormones, or messages, and control the entire body. So, um, and the other big piece of the endocrine system, of course, is that the, the endocrine system is checks and balances. It works in cooperation with each other. Now here, of course, are the seven primary. And I know there are others. And here is uh, Dr. Lee, who was very outspoken about the endocrine system. He made it part of his life's work. This and the heart, I would say, and the products related to those two areas. In fact, Dr. Lee spent most of his life reviewing and working with three primary areas, the endocrine system, the heart and nervous system, and the digestive system. If you look, say at the symptom survey form, you will see that he, um, he worked with Leo Rodifer developing that questionnaire that relates to those three areas specifically. That's why it's still used today. I use it on everyone. Anybody that wants to uh, come under my care or needs my counsel, I need to see a heart sound graph, a heart sound recording graph, and I need to see a, a symptom survey form. So this was a quote from the Herald of Health. This was the, the Wisconsin newspaper out of Milwaukee, 1959. This is a quote from Lee. It must be remembered that the metabolism of the human body being an animal function is a breaking down process of complex compounds that are built up by the systemic process of plant metabolism. The animal or human body cannot build up organic compounds and is wholly dependent upon the vegetable king kingdom for organic foods. Vitamins are a class of organic compounds, probably the most complex of food constituents. All the ductless glands, thyroid, parathyroid. Now remember, the parathyroids are a part of the thyroid uh, and, and do secrete hormones. 
Remember that. And we know this because, and I'm going to give you some information on this today that you've never seen. The parathyroid gland um, balances, especially as we all know, calcium in the blood. I just had a call yesterday. Uh, they want to remove this woman's parathyroid gland. She has got too much calcium in her blood. So there are things that will fix that in a short period of time. A young woman, the thymus gland, the pineal body, the pituitary, the adrenals, the gonads, the pancreas. Now remember, the pancreas is an endocrine and exocrine gland. The endocrine part, there are a million, they estimate, islets call them islands here, uh, Dr. Lee described it, but islets of Langerhans. And there's a million approximately in the pancreas. The pancreas, this part of the pancreas is not involved with the other part, the exocrine. This is a completely sealed. This secretes hormones into the blood. Uh, and the spleen. Now, the other one that he didn't, doesn't have in here, but I've heard him say in others, um, is the heart. So it's interesting with the spleen, and I guess this would be a good conversation to have because this is such a blood organ and an immune organ, very significant during this time with viruses, by the way, or anybody with blood uh, uh, deprivation in any way, anything going on with their blood, from anemia, to um, a loss of ability for the blood to remain vital. Uh, but these must have one or more of the three classes of vitamins. Now, you have all have heard me say this many times. Those three classes of vitamins, as he describes it, are the vitamins, the minerals, and the like protein. In other words, the protomorphogen factors, the glandular factors, in order to secrete their vital fluids. And if deprived of these class, three classes of vitamin, will atrophy, atrophy and cease to function. So do you think that the endocrine gland should be prioritized as number one? Here are his other comments. Um, and th some of this may surprise you, that Lee said, and I've got some other things that he talked about the endocrine system, it lessens the resistance to infectious diseases, including dental caries. Probably didn't know that. It, it disturbs, uh, it, uh, disturbances in metabolism, such as diabetes and rickets. It lessens the sensation of endocrine function, which is, uh, uh, to, uh, which is disturbance to organic function, including mental aberrations, mental activity. So let's just finish here with this a little bit about the endocrine system. The Greek word for hormone means I rose and set in motion. So remember this, as we look especially particularly today at the pituitary. Now, a hormone is an is a agent, a chemical agent that regulates growth and nutrition and assists in the regeneration and breakdown of tissues. That's right. Hormones are primarily made of amino acids and cholesterol. Peptides are amino acids bound together and other uh, other lipids as well, called sterols. Now, um, I wanted to give you a little bit, as we begin here, as once we get to the pituitary, a little bit about the pineal gland. Now, remember that I talked about this a couple months ago. We will get you the notes. Um, and But I wanted to read you this. This is from Human Anatomy, 2006. This is like uh, a book used in universities and medical schools. We do not know much about the pineal, its ac endocrine activity. We are sure that it produces this hormone, melatonin, which acts on the hypothalamus. So if you ever were questioning what is the descendant order of 
healing and influence in the body. It begins with the pineal to the hypothalamus. And then I'll get to the hypothalamus in a second. So, but remember the, these endocrine glands and this system works together. And here is the sentence that proves this. The production of melatonin, this hormone, is stimulated by noradrenaline. You cannot make melatonin in any efficient way unless you have good, strong, healthy adrenals. You see this connection? Uh, it's controlled by the sympathetic nervous system activated in turn by visual stimuli. So this is going on about the pineal, which I'm not gonna read the rest of this, but you can read it. And Dr. Lee did a lot with pineal in a product known as Comfrey Pepsin. He actually put pineal in there. So even though you don't have it specifically uh, to any large amount in a product now, the original line of Dr. Lee's work and his, and his work had pineal in there. Now, you can still get that in neurotrophin and neuroplex. According to standard process, the most pineal is in neuroplex, and the second is neurotrophin, just so you know. So remember now, as we go into this cascade of importance and relevance, we want to look at the hypothalamus. Now, there's a lot about the H HPA axis now, and I, I've heard many hours of lecture on this. I support it. But the hypothalamus is, does not play the same role as the other endocrine glands. And here is why. The hypothalamus is a portion of the brain. It doesn't say it's an endocrine gland. It's a portion of the, now it does secrete hormone. So therefore, it is an endocrine gland. It's a portion of a, the brain that contains a number of small nuclei. It is a neuroendocrine gland. And it has a variety of function, functions. But the main function is here. One of the most important functions of the hypothalamus is to link the nervous system to the endocrine system via the pituitary. So here's our topic for today. So this is the intercessor. This is this uh, gland takes the information from the outer world through the nervous system and then communicates with the pituitary gland first. That's the sequence. Without the pituitary gland, without this master gland, the hypothalamus can't do its job. Okay. Now, uh, this is a great uh, uh, view of these glands and uh, I can't shrink this down, but um, of the brain and this system. I want to go over this briefly. So there's the pineal, very tiny, size of a grain of rice. The pituitary gland has two lobes, posterior and anterior, and it's the size of a pea. And then the uh, hypothalamus is about the size of an almond. Now, um, you'll have to visualize that. Um, this uh, supra chasmatic nucleus is part, uh, just so you know, of the hypothalamus. This is the part of the brain that helps with the pineal, that works in cooperation with the pineal to regulate the day-night rhythm. A lot of people with sleep disorders that cannot figure out, Lowell, Dr. Keppel gave a great hour on that yesterday. Um, a lot of people that have this, the problem is in their brain. A lot of these individuals, I would say most, have had a closed head injury, some kind of trauma to the brain. So I'm not gonna go into that. You can get um, 
Mark Anderson's lecture. It's $30 through selineriverpress.com on closed head injury. If you want to learn about this, but this is the part that they're indicating here. It has a specific role. The optic chasm is like this is crosses over the left and right brain. This is the area for children. Let me give you an example that their eyes cross or they have a lazy eye or they're not autistic. They just cannot remember. They cannot function in school. It's hard for them. This is, this is the area of the body that you wish to support. Now, the, the product, which I don't want to get into now, is hypothalamus PMG. There is a product called hypothalmex as well. Hypothalmex is the cytosol, so that's going to be more functional. And you don't want to overstimulate this area. Always start with the self-regulating substance known as the protomorphogen. Always start with that. Do no harm. Start easy in your amounts. But you can give hypothalamus to these children. I've done it with lazy eye. Cross crawl exercises is if you went to a therapist, that's what they would get this child doing because this area of the body has been traumatized. Sorry, right here. This has been traumatized for some reason, even in the birth canal. Fall, a blow to the head in the child. Could be anything. Could be emotional trauma. Could be mental trauma. But there are nutrients that help that. And the hypothalamus PMG, by the way, is the place to start. And as I said, Pineal, this will give you an idea of the size of this area of the brain that is so small, but so significant. Size of a pea is what we're going to look at today. Now, I have created this chart that, uh, that I've had for years, giving you what Dr. Lee called the three vitamins, the three uh, aspects of what he called vitamins or nutrients food substances and glandular substances for each endocrine gland and an action step, which you can do. And I put in the herbs in there too. So I'm not going to go over that today. You have that. So let's look at the, the, the pituitary itself. I have, have based everything that I've learned, everything that I've used in practice, everything that I've ever taught based on Dr. Lee. And you know what? He was right. And 90% of the time, the application of these products is right. And they work, 90%. Now, pituitrophin, pituitary is really, other than the heart, is my favorite gland to talk about. Some have joked uh, the sales uh, team said my middle name should have been pituitrophin. So, uh, but let's look at what Dr. Lee said. What did he use this for? The breadth and depth of this gland, I think will surprise you. I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised. And in my opinion, any protocol, I can trace any condition you give me back to an endocrine imbalance. Try me out. Any that you're working with. And you're going to see a lot today that you wouldn't think. So what did Dr. Lee say about this? The pituitary regulates, oh, fatigue. You probably would never have thought of that. Nervous, this nervous exhaustion from excess mental stress and overactivity. And this ties back, of course, uh, with this relates to specifically with adrenal stress and adrenal breakdown, yes. Now you've heard me speak of the ruminator, the person that can't get to sleep because they keep thinking. And in Chinese medicine, that is a spleen deficiency. In our way of thinking with Dr. Lee, it's a pituitary deficiency. How about, how about tolerance? 
Do you think in this day, today, the time we are living in, we need tolerance? We need pituitary support right now. Right now. And I'll review those products in a few minutes. Stress, tolerance, instability, inability to work under pressure. Think of all the parents home right now with their kids trying to work themselves and keep their jobs. And then they have to homeschool their children. Think of all the hospital people. And other symptoms related to the thyroid. To the thyroid. Now we know and we have learned the relationship between the pituitary and the thyroid. And I have some great information for you about this too. Digestive complaints. So remember that there's three areas, always three. Learn based on three. Teach based on three. Apply nutrition based on three things. So the three areas that I'm looking at with you today, and we'll see other things as well, is of course hormonal balance, digestive balance, and musculoskeletal balance, all related to the pituitary. And here he is, digestive complaints, ulcers, colitis, diarrhea, gastritis. Now we know all the other, we know and we've heard all the other products that relate to these, but without the influence of balanced pituitary function, you cannot heal an ulcer. Can't do it. It's not going to happen or colitis. Because the uh, and I'll get into that this in a second in more depth, but the autonomic nervous system is regulated by the pituitary gland. If the autonomic system is too fast, then the dig digestive system never stops, it never rests, which it should. And this is where you get irritation, then you get conditions like ulcers and colitis and all kinds of gastritis. Metabolism disorders, metabolic disorders. How about fluid balance? You, if you see someone with swollen ankles, we probably forget to think of pituitary. How about weight, blood sugar? The relationship between the pituitary and the pancreas is one of the most significant relationships in the body. Diaplex is a perfectly formulated product. What does it have in it? Pancreas and pituitary, PMGs. So, uh, and growth, which we'll look at, uh, and headaches, migraine headaches, unless you can get the pituitary to the balance point, migraine headaches are not gonna go away. Yes, the liver's involved. Yes, head trauma's involved, of course. But we've, that head trauma is mainly related to trauma in the pituitary, maybe the hypothalamus too. Vasomotor disturbances. And I'm gonna show you what Dr. Lee said specifically about hot flashes. Moving into this part of the third part of your life as a female or andropause too, we didn't put that in there, with testosterone is all regulated between the gonads and the pituitary. So here, here are the other organs that I, in these metabolic disturbances. Healing time. Now, this is the one area that I have used pituitrophin so significantly people that cannot heal, your clients that what, no matter what you do, they do not get better or they take forever. And you say, well, they got to eat better and they got to do this and they got to do that. And that is all, that's all valid. It's all absolutely true. But you have to have the key player. You have to have, now a lot of you like my esoteric uh, uh, perceptions. The pituitary is the mother. So what does the mother do? The mother receives, forgives, holds, and strengthens. Now that's from Mother Teresa. But the mother watches over just the endocrine system, 
yes, but through that, the entire body. Now in Chinese medicine, uh, some of you have taught me this, some of you that have studied that, I haven't studied it as much, um, and I've learned a lot from all of you. For instance, the spleen is the mother of the lungs. The kidney is the mother of the liver. The pituitary is the mother of the entire body. Very significant. And this, all you have to do as a practitioner is observe their healing response. Is the body responding? I know a lot of you, we get a lot of calls. I put them on the program you said and they're not getting better. Add pituitrophin or something with pituitrophin in it. Has to be enough. Has to be enough to make it a relevant clinical outcome. And we'll go over that. Nervous manifestations tachycardia. You never thought of using pituitrophin with tachycardia. Difficulty swallowing. You know, how many of your clients say, I can't take these pills because I can't swallow? Pituitary deficiency. People that are sensitive to light, that have a lot of spasms, acid reflux, pituitary. Heart and digestion. So I already mentioned that we're going to go over these three areas. And um, before I start uh, with the, the main protocol with this, I'm going to, um, oh, I'm going to go over that first. I'm sorry. Um, I thought there was another PowerPoint before this. So always there's three products. Remember my, remember my uh, right here, pituitary. Uh, and you need, uh, you can either use chlorophyll or a cataplex E. Um, the fat soluble vitamins. You must have the vitamin, the mineral, and the like protein. And of course, you can use the uh, herb as well. So here are the products. Pituitrophin PMG, how much a day you start. Uh, we should have put these in, Lynn, uh, the dosing. So you could make a note of that, please. Um, you want to start with one twice a day for a week, then go to two twice a day. Do no harm. Think of the responsibility that this gland has. Do you want to uh, challenge it in any way? Of course not. Be gentle, do no harm. Now, I have never had to go to three and three of pituitrophin. Maybe you have, maybe you will. I have never had to do that. Because I always use, I honor this triad of application. Just how Dr. Lee created it. If it works, don't fix it. This works. And you must have the mineral. Now, manganese is the mineral, just like iodine for the thyroid. Just like zinc for the gonads. You could go all the way through. You can look at the chart. You've got to have that mineral. And believe it or not, whether you knew this or not, the mineral for manganese, the most depleted mineral in the soil in this country is manganese. And you only absorb three to 5% of whatever you take. That's why you look at the dosages in Ligaplex one of manganese, they're so high, they're, they seem way out of balance, they're not, because you're only absorbing a small percentage of it. And remember, Manganese is the least toxic mineral on earth. It's safe. This is one of the reasons we age, especially structurally, is the deficient deficiency. All these knee replacements, all these back surgeries, all this osteoporosis, you go on. This is a key player. And then of course, cataplexy. From pea vine, pea vine juice, the main source. And Dr. Goodhart, uh, I had been to many of his lectures, sat all weekend with him. And every time he'd get out the synthetic vitamin E, muscles would go weak. Couldn't fix the person. Cataplex E with a little two international uh, IUs of uh, D-alpha tocopherol, strengthened them immediately. And I, I got a little information on E, cataplex E that you'll see. 
Joseph, so, before you go on, if you could just go back to the ligaplex and what your oh, I'm sorry, would Joseph. Be. Yes, thank you very much. So the best uh, for ligaplex one is three twice a day. Now that could be taken with food. This is a this is a very uh, um, very dense product, and uh, and it works really well. Uh, you know, Mark and I over the years for people that say, "Oh, I got to have rotator cuff surgery," not if you do enough ligaplex one. And but you've got to add the pituitary factor. Many people have used this. To say, Joe, that that thing didn't work. I know because you didn't have the three parts that made it whole. The application has to be made whole. Once you do that, then you have the application as it was meant to be. And that's why we're teaching this for you. So this will be three twice a day. Now, uh, that can be taken just, there's no protomorphogen in there, so you could take it, oh, it, it does, it has ostrophin in there. That's right, I apologize. This should be on an empty stomach. So that, an empty stomach, by the way, for all of you, don't make this complicated. And it can be taken with the pituitrophin. Is one hour before a meal or two hours after? The simplest way is when, the minute you get up, wait an hour before you eat breakfast. Most people don't even eat a good breakfast. And just before you go to bed. Shouldn't have food, a lot of food in your stomach before you go to bed. That's why people are restless all night. And cataplex E is three twice a day. This is the tried and true clinical dose. So, so what else via hormones does specifically, based on Dr. Lee's findings, conception? I use simplex F and simplex M for the male, simplex F for the female on every Every couple that wants to have a child, once the woman conceives, she doesn't need the simplex F anymore because of the pituitary factor. Gestation and delivery. I have two cases just in the last 10 years that the, the nutritionist, their, their daughter, the baby couldn't deliver. I said, get some pituitrophin, give it to them within a few hours. What do they use? What do they give the, 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 the woman trying to deliver? Pitocin. Well, why not just signal the pituitary to remove the burden from that gland to function normally? And it does. And it does. Growth cycles in children. And we'll talk about that in more depth in a second. Menstruation cycles. Listen, women that have cycling problems, that is a disconnect between the pituitary and the ovaries. It's the same reason that there's hot flashes, but in cycling women, there you have it. Every headache protocol, every headache is pituitary and phospholiquid, 90% of the time. If it doesn't completely clear them, it will lessen them considerably abnormal growths, fibroids, scar tissue, cancers. You must have the self-regulating factor that is inherent in the pituitary to stop abnormal growth of tissue. What about these clients that they lose the, uh, they use the, uh, the coloring on their skin? Vitiligo, pituitrophin. Now, I, it, it hasn't come back with people that I've worked with over the years, but it stops immediately, vitiligo. And most of you didn't know. Now, you don't, you, if you question me, you can look it up, but you can ask Lynn because we were, I said this and I said, I, I remember, because Lynn pulls all this memory out of me about how to apply these things that I've forgotten. And I said, graying of hair. And Lynn goes, well, let me look that up. And there it is. Graying of hair is melanin. Where is melanin made? Pituitary. There you go. You want the, the actual cause of graying of hair? It's a pituitary deficiency. 
And then of course, your fluid balance uh, and kidney balance. And then of course, the great relationship, which a lot of teaching now between uh, balancing the hormonal system, but the overall system using uh, this HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal. So let's just look at a couple of examples of how the pituitary works and the, in the secretions work with different organs in the body. Now this is from uh, 1983, but there's some other, there's some newer information on it, but this, I just love this so much. Another component of the heart brain communication, what part of the brain? Hypothalamus pituitary probably pineal, was provided by a research study uh, uh, studying the hormonal system. The heart was reclassified as an endocrine gland. Now, I didn't know this till somebody said, I don't know if it was Dr. Keppel or somebody sent this article to me. In 1983, I, you guys have been holding out on me here, a hormone produced and released by the heart called atrial uh, neutroretic factor, ANA was isolated. The hormone exerts its effect on the blood vessels. Blood pressure, everyone. Pituitary. Use something with pituitrophin in it for these chronic hypertensions, tensive people. Neuroplex, paraplex, simplex F, simplex M, or straight pituitrophin on blood vessels, on the kidneys, which is blood vessels pretty much, and adrenal glands, which has a, plays a big part in hypertension, and on a large number of regulatory regions in the brain. It was also found that the heart contains a cell type, a cell type, known as intrinsic cardio andro, andronergic andrenergic, ICA cells. These cells release noradrenaline. Oh, hold on. What did we say about noradrenaline? The heart helping the, kid, the adrenals, helping the pineal. There's a triad for you. And dopamine neurotransmitters. Now, this is Parkinson's, everyone. This is Parkinson's. So let me just mute everybody out here for a second. Good. And I'm going to get in, just review that quickly at the end. This, this piece right here related to the heart. Uh, the main herb is St. John's wort. So don't forget. These cells release noradrenaline and dopamine once thought to be produced only by the neurons in the central nervous system. Hey, something else has been found that always has been there. Dr. Lee's work with the heart sound recorder and that technology and that application, what I've said more times than you all want to hear now, you've got to fix the heart first in conjunction with balancing the endocrine system. Here it is. They have found it. Well, good for you. We already know it, but I'm glad they found it. Good for you. More recently, it's discovered that the heart also secretes oxytocin. Pituitary produces oxytocin, commonly referred to as the love or bonding hormone. You think you need to keep your heart healthy during this time? Does everyone want to be held? And they can't hold each other. Do you think people want to bond now? They can't, but you can support the heart. And yes, it does help the heart, uh, not just, uh, oh, where is my thing to move my, how come I can't see it? Uh, oh, sorry, there it goes. Um, you, if you support the heart, you help all of these stressors that we're in the middle of and will be for a while to come. And coming out of this country, especially financially. 
all of you need to be getting a heart sound recording done on you as soon as you're capable of getting that now or taking supplements for the heart. So, um, uh, where was I? Commonly referred to as the love of born bonding hormone. In addition to its function in childbirth and lactation. Yes. Now we do. We have a great lactation protocol of mammary um, uh, mammary PMG. But always, when the woman has delivered, get them back on Simplex F. And fenugreek, by the way, is the other one. Recent evidence indicates that this hormone is also involved in cognition, there's memory loss, tolerance. God, do we need tolerance. Adaptation, we need to recreate ourselves now. Complex sexual and maternal behaviors, these women that cannot conceive, learning social cues, you think people need to be respect each other socially right now? And the establishment of enduring bonds, friendships. I have many friendships on this line forever. And that's because we've kept our hearts healthy. And we've supported our pituitary gland, <laughs> which sounds almost funny to say, but true. Concentrations of oxytocin in the heart were found to be as high as those found in the brain. Wow. Now, for those of you that are new, this is the ideal graph for each valve with the heart sound recorder. And this is part of my 10 observational findings in my advanced training. If you don't have this, I would be glad to send that to you. Just shoot me an email and just say advanced training, advanced HSR training, I'll get it. So when you have someone in bradycardia, which is a term we cannot use because that's diagnosing, but you have someone with a slow heart. These are people that have poor circulation. They, they are slow. They cannot think, they can't remember, they can't function well. If your heart is slow, and a lot of athletes say, well, that's how I want my heart. No, you don't. You don't get the tissue repair. If you're too slow, then you don't get oxygen. Do you need oxygen on this planet? Well, so far, as far as I've known, uh, we need it. Or too fast. Now, this is danger, Will Roberts. Danger. Too fast. Tic-tac rhythm. Boom, 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 boom. This is your fight or flight. This is your rest and digest. So this needs, yes, the mineral phosphorus. This mean, needs the mineral potassium. The mineral that accelerates, the mineral that breaks. I'm not gonna go into that. You've got the protocols here in priority. Who is the regulator of this? Say, and we've had this, put people on a lot of phosphorus and it still didn't balance out. Just give them some pituitrophin. Balances right out. The regulator of the autonomic nervous system is the pituitary. Yes, in conjunction with the hypothalamus. Yes, in conjunction, in conjunction with the pineal. Absolutely. Pituitary is key your key player. This tells you whether you're in, you're in, uh, it determines whether you're in defense physiology right here, fight or flight, or you're in healing physiology, which would be this ratio right here. This is part of defense physiology too. You hide. The body literally hides and slows down. So this was another article uh, just to finish this, this area, this uh, part on the, um, about the pituitary and the uh, endocrine system. And Dr. Uh, Sages, I think that's the right uh, way to pronounce his name. Dr. Lee worked with him. He was another eclectic doctor uh, and uh, organotherapist. 
and look at, listen to what he said. This, this was in one of Dr. Lee's uh, newsletters. Has pointed out principles and effect as regard to overactive thyroid and adrenals. The pituitary body governs oxygenation. Oh, wow. Does this tie back in with the autonomic nervous system? Yes, just what I taught you. Metabolism, nutrition in all animals supplied with the thyroid and adrenal glands. If you have an, a thyroid and adrenal glands, you need a good functioning pituitary to help with these things. In vertebrates, the pituitary body is connected with the hypoparathyroid apparatus. All these people having their parathyroid glands removed, which is insanity because they have too much calcium in their blood. Well, fix the problem. Don't snip the wire, get to the cause. Oh, they don't know it. They don't understand it. That the pituitary regulates the parathyroid glands. It because it regulates the thyroid gland. So add that to your protocol for hypercalcemia. Pituitrophin, uh, and you can use, of course, you could use vitamin D. The, the body is calling for calcium in the blood, so it's overstimulating the parathyroid glands to put it there. And Calma Plus, which is parathyroid tissue. Now, I'm not going to get into that. If you want that hypercalcemia uh, protocol, just shoot me an email or let Lynn know. I'll get that to you. The pituitary body contains the governing center of the thyroparathyroid apparatus and adrenals and coordinates the secret, secret, secretory um, activity of the organs. Oh, I, 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 I have chronic constipation for decades. You're not getting enough secretions throughout your digestive system to move food through your system normally, the normal transit time, pituitary. The pituitary body governs this constipation. And women and men, vaginal secretions. Women say their skin, everything dries up. I dry up my skin, my vaginal secretions. Men, they, 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 they're prostates. They can't function sexually. That's a pituitary issue. He also established the fact that pituitary functions as a test organ. I'm not sure what he meant by that. I'll have to ask Mark about that. And reacts to the quantitative and qualitative deficiency of the thyroid secretion in the bloodstream. Here is Hashimoto's. Here is all of your relationship. Thyroid stimulating hormone is produced by the hypothalamus and stored and released through the pituitary. There you have it. Metabolism, aging, too much weight as we age. All of this tied in. And finally, menopause. This is brilliant. At the time of menopause, there is usually a loss of ovarian hormone, which inhibits the sympathetic nervous system. Without this inhibition, because when do women get a hot flash? If they overstimulate their nervous system, cup of coffee, they get upset, they eat something that's not good for them. They're stressed at night. A lot of hot flashes happen at night. Without this inhibitor, you need the balancer for that. Rise is given to the sympathetic atonia with the splenic blood. Now, the splenic blood is the blood in, of the internal organs, not just the spleen, but the blood that should be in and around your digestive system and in your abdomen, in your, in your whole inner uh, workings of your body. Going towards the periphery, causing the typical hot flashes. And it's accompanied by disturbances in calcium metabolism, by the way. So here he gave the key. What is that relationship that he's talking about? It's the relationship between the pituitary and the ovaries. They dance together. They're partners. It's the dance of the hormonal system. It it's, relates to 
the beauty of a person, the appearance, the handsomeness of a man, the beauty of a woman is all tied in with this dance between the pituitary and the gonads, men and women. If you lose your dance partner, what happens? You're scurrying around. And that's when the body cannot regulate that sympathetic, i.e. hot flashes. This was a case uh, that was one of, one of the many that I have in using pituitrophin. So this was a baby, a female. She was six weeks pregnant. Uh, you can look at when you study the notes, her history, she's had one miscarriage. You know she's deficient in this relationship, right? Between the uterus and the pituitary. Uh, she was on sleep aids, nausea, nausea meds. Um, this was the program that this practitioner from Iowa did a great job. What a great program. But the baby was admitted uh, with only one cm of amniotic fluid. So they base it on this, uh, this proportion. The normal is 10. Without amniotic fluid, the baby can't live. And why the, and the baby was not growing after 22 weeks. So the doctor called me, what can we do? She's gonna lose the baby. I said, let's give her the two crucial factors for balancing growth and repair in the body. Pituitrophin, now she did use B, 3BID because the baby was gonna die. And Super EFF, our beloved, now, I would have gone three BID, but two BID. Here is any condition in the body. Here is your fatty acid factor pre-digested in the, in the liver. Not gonna go into that today. So, that wonderful program that she did, I had no problem with it at all. It was a great program, just needed the mother. The mother needed the mother. Here it is. So, the, uh, in, in end of July, one cm of amniotic fluid. The end of August, now remember the normal is 10. In one month, it was up to eight. By just before delivery, it went up to 14. All we did was we added pituitrophin and SupriFF. Then it reduced until the birth to the normal range. The body could say overshot the amount. Fine, I'll take more. The baby was starving to death. And there's the baby. Now they were going to do, <clears throat> they were going, they were insist on doing a C-section on this baby. They said, we got to take this baby now. She's only four pounds, one ounce. As it turns out, she went to full term and the baby was delivered vaginally. Four months old, she now weighs 12 pounds, 12 ounces, tripling her weight. Mother and child are doing good. Just a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. Yep, 10 days ago. Some of the other factors with uh, the, the products related to the pituitary is one that you probably haven't used much. And I, I had to go to my mentor, Mark, to find out what he used this for in his career. I haven't used this product much. Now, this is a product that Dr. Lee developed in 1958. A lot of practitioners, a lot of you say, well, you know, uh, um, you know, Dr. Lee didn't honor this triad. Well, he did in this product. This product has the manganese and the vitamin E in it and the pituitary, the anterior pituitary. Now, what did, what did they use it? Now, this is a desiccated tissue. This was the only desiccate other than uh, liver powder that Lee put into products. They were all, other than that, they were cytosol and protomorphogen because they were experimenting and they had found some things 
uh, uh, Dr. Hadower before he died and Dr. Lee about how giving this more functional stimulating product, what it helps. And it mainly helps children that are not developing. Abnormal growth factors, poor structural development. Now, what does that mean? Children as they go, grow from about three years old to about 21 years old have growth plates in their bones. These children, you've seen them, they've been in your office, do not, they're very slow and uh, to develop. Now, this isn't dwarfism. Dwarfism's, dwarfism has already taken place. That, that, that ship has sailed. This isn't going to necessarily help that. And these are, this is not failure to thrive, everyone. So don't get confused with this. Some of you more, uh, uh, more advanced doctors that have been on my calls, this isn't failure to thrive. This has to do particularly and specifically with the anatomic development, the structural development of bones, the long bone, and the growth plates. And boy, does it work. Now, you all remember doc, great Dr. Versendahl, and what did he use this for? He used this, he would have a child come in one year, he'd put them on this, then the next year, this was all on film. Uh, Dr. Keppel has all of his old, uh, old recordings, because I gave them all to the ones I had, which was about 30 of them, I think. The next year, the child had grown one to three inches. So there you have. Now, you could, of course, you think, well, are they going to overgrow? No. No, it's nutrition. It's going to balance. So the other area we wanted to look at, and I know I'm over my time here, but I did get start late, so I'm almost there, um, is the digestion piece. Now, I already talked about this with ulcers, but remember that the pituitary is the governor of all digestion through this autonomic nervous system balancing piece. You should never do, in my opinion, should never undertake or your clients a purification program, a drainage protocol or detoxification without pituitrophin in the protocol. Now I can send you a newsletter that I wrote years ago on before and after the purification program. Guess what's in there? Paraplex, pituitary, thyroid, pancreas, and adrenal. Always, always include pituitrophin. Regulating these people with chronic constipation. Yeah, I go once every two days. It's hard and it's transit time. Or they're too fast. Your bowels are moving three times a day, pituitrophin. We already talked about healing. And Mark uh, had also taught me, which I just learned today, diabetes insipidus. Now, I'm, I talked to you about this relationship between the pituitary and the pancreas. This is what they found to be very significant with diabetics is e-manganese. Listen, everyone, use it. Use it. Of course, you can use pituitrophin. Pancreas and pituitrophin are in diaplex, the protomorphogens. And of course, the famous, which probably none of you knew, what oversees fat deposits? <laughs> I hate my body. <laughs> I don't want fat going there. They can go here, but not here. Pituitary. This is the hormone the pituitary produces, lipotropin that regulates and oversees where fat goes. Here's a piece of an article that Lynn can put in the box so we can send it to you, which is great. The key to this whole syndrome of these are the people that cannot take weight off is the posterior uh, pituitary action. Now there is a clinical pearl. Most overweight people have an obviously dis disordered endocrine balance, but too much attention in the past has been directed to the thyroid. Yeah, give me something for my thyroid. I want to lose this weight. 
<clears throat> wrong. May play a part, but it's not the whole picture. You've got to put it together if you want that clinical outcome. Sometimes the thyroid is at fault, but not very often. Here's the master. I mean, he's telling you, the pituitary deficient patient is the type that cannot reduce in spite of food restrictions. How many times have you and I <laughs> heard, I don't eat anything. I don't eat anything and I put on weight. Here it is. Now, posterior pituitary, you wouldn't use the e-manganese. It's not gonna help. You would use the pituitrophin. Now, the pituitary and simplex M, F, or neuroplex, or um, diaplex, or paraplex is not gonna be enough for this type of, they need straight pituitrophin. I gave you my obesity protocol in uh, chronic weight gain, but they just can't. Oh, I didn't put dosages in here. Lynn and I will fix that. And then the, the last but not least is the musculoskeletal. How many, how many of your clients, I'm having knee surgery, I'm having hip surgery. Now they're, now they're replacing ankles and shoulders. This is a manganese deficiency, everyone. It's as simple as that. Let's not complicate this. But it's a manganese deficiency in relationship to that triad of pituitary, cataplex E, not synthetic E, not a lot of D-alpha tocopherol, natural vitamin C, and pituitary. Knees from accidents. People fall on their walks. I see elderly people. And I would say, if they fall, that's it for the rest of their life. They're out there trying to walk and they just don't have the tonus, tonus in their ligaments and joints. And osteoporosis, osteopenia. And here, and, and discs. I have had three of my best friends, people I love in this world, that have all had disc surgery lately. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Manganese deficiency. Do you, you don't have to believe me. Listen to Dr. Goodhart, father of cardiology, of, of, uh, of muscle testing. Here it is. Dr. Goodhart describes how he can use the trace minerals. It, and that has a lot of manganese in it. That's a good product. With the other, uh, with the other trace minerals for each endocrine gland. And it has manganese, a lot of manganese in there, as successful nutrition adjunct in treating disc lesions. It struck him that the lack of tone in the connective tissue in these cases was reminiscent of porosis, a famous slipped tendon disease in chickens. They figured this out through chickens. That's how. A lot of the eclectics found this. The chickens couldn't walk. They had to kill them. Manganese being a known veterinary cure for porosis. Dr. Goodhart began to administer, began administrating the mineral to his disc patients with great success. And these are the other the other, other products, Calcifood, food, which has disc material in there, by the way and go to cola, which stops the scarring, which is so inherent in uh, bad disc function. But you've got to use the pituitrophin and the manganese and the E as well. And you'd say, well, I can't give them all that. Well, then take them off of everything else. Give them the three. And if they'll take a fourth, great. Or if they'll take an herb, great. And this herb particularly totally healed my back. I was on all of this when I went through cancer. In fact, they thought I had bone cancer. My back was so bad I couldn't even lift my granddaughter. And uh, this was the missing piece for me. And getting on straight pituitrophin. I was taking Simplex M or Parapl Paraplex at that time. But So here is your primary protocol with the dosing. 
And I wanted to touch base on with herbs. And, um, oh, so, and I also put this on Cataplex E because Cataplex E has not been given the credit that it deserves. I, I beg all of you to get one bottle of Cataplex E and take six a day till that bottle is done. You tell me, it's impressive. Your, the heart sound recording people, all of you running graphs where you cannot get that S1, that strength of that closure to be what you want it to be. And a lot of you know it. You add in cataplex E, home run, home run. I want to make one comment about all of this. Intercellular effects reported beneficial in virus infections. What? Vitamin E for envelope viruses? Come on, Joe. That's what Dr. Lee said. Reported beneficial in virus infections. Herpes, herpes zoster, colds, and others. Corona? Question mark? You tell me. This is why malnutrition, inflammation, disease, everyone. I'm gonna read you an article on Tuesday on my webinar. They have just found out most of the people, uh, not most, 20% of the people that are dying, 20%, so let's say one quarter, because it's probably higher than that now, have had a head trauma or a heart trauma. That's why they're dying. That, that was the inflammation in their body that the disease overwhelmed them. Malnutrition, inflammation, disease. Fix the heart, fix the endocrine system. So these are the herbs. Now, listen, I already gave you the triad from a nutritional standpoint. These herbs have been used for thousands of years to help those three parts of the brain. Let me give you one example. St. John's wort. Where is St. John's wort here? Didn't we put St. John's wort in? Uh, let's see. Oh, we didn't. Oh, that's down here. Okay. Let, let's go to this. Uh, and of course, St. John's wort, by the way, is for envelope viruses, by the way. So here is a little blend, or you could do, uh, or you could take them in tablet form. For the pineal, I was listening to uh, a therapist the other day, uh, and he said, we all need an injection of serotonin right now. Well, there's your go-to-cola. That is the herb for the pineal, for the production of serotonin. The hypothalamus with dopamine is St. John's wort. And the pituitary oxytocin, the love hormone, is either ginseng or eleuthero. Ginseng is very expensive. That's why eleuthero is very good. And these, both, these all come in liquids. You can make up a blend and you put them all when using liquids. You can mix in equal portions. You can take a tablespoon in the morning. Now it's about a third of a glass of wine. Great way to start the day, my opinion. <laughs> but, uh, or you could do a half a tablespoon in the morning, a half a tablespoon in the evening. This is the brain blend everyone needs right now. And it supports the pineal, hypothalamus, and the pituitary. Get these in, in, uh, and make this up for you over these challenging months. It'll work. It'll help you. Now, this is great. This would be a great formulation for someone with Parkinson's, not to get too specific and in the weeds here. This is what a person with Parkinson's needs. It's because the dopamine factor, they have lost. This, this herb plays a part with the balancing of dopamine and this part of the body and this, uh, how it affects has to do with the rhythms of the body, like nervous system balance, walking, breathing, all of that that's uh, associated with Parkinson's.
terrible condition. So one final thought. I was, I was in a crisis point in my life. And my dad sent me these, uh, sent me these two photos. He was a man of few words and he wrote on a piece of paper, perspective. And here's, uh, oh, this is a little too big here. Let me see if I can get this, oops. Uh, oh, there it goes. Let me just get this down a little bit. This is the neurons in the brain. How many neurons in the brain do we have? A hundred billion neurons, estimated. How many galaxies in the universe is there? Estimated by science, 100 billion. So are we part, this, all we've talked about today is the crucial functioning parts of the brain, the pineal, the hypothalamus, the pituitary. Are we part of something greater? You could ask anybody, but if you ask me, these look pretty much the same. And so I will leave you with that thought. Thank you all for being on. I went a little bit over my hour, but I think it was good. And of course, we'll stay on and uh, take some questions now. Joseph, before we open it up, I've got a couple that were in the chat box. If you could go back up to the, uh, uh, right there. The, the products the that know the products with, uh, can, uh, talk about the dosages. So go down to the, uh, oh, right okay. there. I, I see. Right okay. there, because uh, we had one question is, what would the equivalent dose be of the simplex F and M? Oh, and that's plus? great. Thank you. Yes, right. So the one tablet of simplex M, F, or paraplex, I, and I believe neuroplex, is 25% pituitrophin. So you want one tablet of pituitrophin, four tablets. You want two tablets of pituitrophin, it would be eight tablets. That's what we recommend. I recommend for everyone is four in the morning of any of these and four in the evening, not Neuroplex. Neuroplex is such a powerful product. I have never gone be beyond two and two, which means you'll get less of the pituitrophin, but you'll still be all right. Now, remember uh, just one additional thought here. Right now with this virus, is approximately, I just estimated the numbers, I could be wrong, about 30 people are dying a day since, since January for the last three months. Then I looked up car accidents. There are 6 million car accidents a year in the United States. 3 million of them are very bad accidents. 90 people die a day in car accidents. So let's have some perspective with this virus. Now, listen, I am all for, I am hunkered down here. I have not seen anybody. I haven't been out. This has been a wonderful time with all of us. We haven't had to, and we're all safe. I'm all supportive of it, but let's have perspective. We can't, we cannot be in love if we're in fear. And Neuroplex is a key product for these people that are having to enter the hospitals because they have had a car accident. They have had a fall. They've had trauma to their heart, which happens in a fall or an emotional trauma or a mental trauma. This is a key product, which pituitrophin plays a huge part. In. So anyway, just a little thought on that. Yes. And okay. one more question, and then we'll open it up to everybody yeah. else. This was in the chat box earlier. So does the pituitary apply to the loss of hair as well as graying? When you no. were talking about the graying. No, the, the loss of hair in men is because they have too much dihydrotestosterone. Well, you know what? That is a good question. I don't know who asked that, but that- David. David. Well, David, uh, I have to think about that. But listen, 
the, the secretions of dihydrotestosterone are guided and regulated by the pituitary. Wow. That is, that's a pretty amazing thought. It could be. See, dihydrotestosterone, now you notice men, I'll take men, men baldness first. You take men and uh, that are losing their hair, they're hairy all over their bodies because they have a lot. They have excesses amounts of testosterone. They're very vital men. You look at the top of their head, you don't think so, but they are. They have a lot, too much. So that's a very waxy substance. When that dihydrotestosterone breaks the blood brain barrier, the body never releases it back into the body. It gets stuck up in the brain and the body tucks it away up, a, up in the top of the head where the hair follicles are. And it, the hair follicles can't get oxygen. That's why these chemicals, I don't want to get into this, but these chemicals that they apply, which are carcinogenic, they, they uh, take away that wax. They dissipate that wax in the hair follicle which you could probably do with zinc, by the way. So uh, we, it certainly works with sebaceous fluid. It would probably work with the hair follicle. So uh, I would say to your question, even though I haven't considered it with my other colleagues or thought about it, I would say, yes, there is a correlation. Now with women, again, they are, theirs is more a liver factor and a protein factor. When the woman goes through menopause, their liver gets very compromised. And falling hair in women is more of a liver, uh, a, a broken breakdown in liver function. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, and obviously uh, the liver, I mean, we could look it up, is tied in with uh, pituitary, uh, specifically uh, pituitary function through thyroid function, which I'll get to in my next hour with you on thyroid, which is the next one I'm going to do. So that would be for women would be, again, simplex F, paraplex, and then something for the liver, Livco, Livaplex, uh, protofood, uh, protein deficiency is a big thing. So that's uh, hair loss in women. And vitamin F, by the way, vitamin F is the other big player for women with hair loss or hair uh, too much hair accumulation in menopause is the saturated fatty acids factor. Yep. Okay. Joseph? Yes. Joseph, if you're taking Paraplex, should you also be taking the uh, pituitary and so how much? No, it, you would choose between the two. You don't have to take Paraplex and pituitrophin on top of it. That, that would be uh, probably overkill. Yeah. I would, I would do the, like the six or eight paraplex a day um, and try it to getting two pituitrophin a day in that equation, you know, that math there. So I, I, I don't think you need to do both. But if you have a diabetic, of course, uh, a type one diabetic, the first thing you got to do is check them for parasites. So Dr. Lee said most type one diabetics had parasites as a child. So that's the first thing. But if you're going to work with it, yeah, you would do, you would probably use, I like to use straight pituitrophin, straight pancreatrophin, and then uh, cataplex GTF. That's, that's where I like to go and some zinc. Well, you, when, you gave me, a, you gave me a, a protocol for somebody that's severely constipated with a paraplex, uh, uh, and, and trace minerals B12 the other day. And now I'm wondering if we add pituitrophin PMG to that also. That was someone else. That's not my protocol for constipation. Oh. I, don't know. I don't know who that was. I can send you my protocol for constipation. Yeah, because that's, I, I'm pretty sure I talked to you, but I, may, I don't know, okay? No, I haven't talked to you since we worked on your project together. And then what, what were the three uh, uh, herbs that you talked about for the um, brain blend? Well, the, the, you mean the regular brain, oh, this, this one here, you mean? For yeah, the... you said pineal was gota cola, 
And yeah, it's then, right. It's right there in your notes. Do you, did you get the notes? Uh, no, I asked Lynn to send them, but I oh, haven't. Oh, so gotten it's them. all right. It's go to Cola St. John's Wort and either ginseng, or uh, either the um, Korean ginseng or the Eleuthero, one or the other. This is very mm -hmm. expensive product. Medi Europe makes the only Korean ginseng uh, with with the the full uh, robust part of the root in the United States that go, comes into the United States. Most of the Korean ginsengs are just junk. They're the fibers off the main root. Medierb uses the main root. This is a very you're powerful about, product. Yeah. You're talking about Medierb, St. John's Award, the liquid you're not talking about. This Saint is John's a, well, you could use the tablets. There's go to cola tablets. There's St. John's Wort tablets and there's Eleuthero tablets. Are it, Lynn, is there ginseng tablets? I, I don't know. But I'm saying, I guess my question is, on the St. John's Award, is, is the standard process IMD St. John's Award capsules? Not, not it's not, appropriate? it's not strong enough, no. Okay. You need the Medier, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, who else? I don't right. see ginseng tablets. No. Okay, so. So what, what you could, oh, this is what you could use, because I take this all the time, is rhodiola ginseng. This, is, this would be the one in a tablet form, everyone. Somebody sent me an article the other day that uh, endurance runners that do triathlons or marathons, I didn't know this. After they run, they use, most of them come down with a virus and they use rhodiola as an antiviral after they perform. Interesting, huh? I could send you that article. Uh, it's a, it's a, in, you know, in, in the article was from a good source too. It was not just, just some of the junk that's out there. But rhodiola ginseng is a great herb uh, for many reasons, but I did not know rhodiola had antiviral properties. So, and I didn't know that runners usually get sick after a, uh, an event, so. You mentioned uh, uh, hair loss for the men. What they need to take? Well, I could I could send you my protocol. Okay, I thought only only we have one product. Let's let's start. No, no, no. You would have to. There's several products you want to use. The main thing with men, as far as herbs, is you want to use go to cola. I mean, you want to use Shazandra. That's in Livco. Because you need liver, good liver clearance. And then you need something like for the men to uh, get a good hormonal clearance, you would need um, something like uh, Antronex, something that's going to dilate the portal vein. I forgot the protocol that I used off the top of my head. But I can send that to you. I'd be glad to for male pattern baldness. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Joseph. What is Hey. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead. So uh, quick question. You know, it seems like that oxytocin and vasopressin, which is also called aldosterone or antidiuretic hormone, are right. both, they're both produced in the posterior pituitary. Right. But it, it seems like that all standard process uh, pituitary related glandulas are only anterior pituitary. Pituitary related. Oh, no, no, that's not correct. That, I don't know who told you that, but that's wrong. Standard process uses the whole pituitary. It has anterior and posterior in, in the protomorphogens that are in all those products that I mentioned. So the protomorphogen is maybe both, but I, I was reading the labels on the other ones and they all seem like anterior pituitary. So what, what, what other products? I, I'm not well. Following. Like e manganese. Oh yes, e manganese is. It was specifically the anterior pituitary. Yeah. Right, and then um, also manganese B12. Yes, that's correct. Yep. So and then that's why you have to use pituitrophin for these different conditions that we went over, or simplex F. M, paraplex, or neuroplex, because they're going to have the whole gland in there. Yes. Okay, that's a great clarification. And yeah. 
And, and remember, it, it's the protomorphogen of the gland. It's the nuclear protein. So that's, but yeah. they do use the whole gland, not just the anterior. Yes. Okay, great. And then um, in regards to the DHT, you know, that um, needs to be reduced in men um, or actually in women also with uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, do you think the best thing to clear the DHT is schizandra? The, that's the greatest hormone clearance substance in the world that I know of. There's nothing better. And then Antronex uh, would probably be the uh, one in standard process. Okay. Because of the dilation of the portal vein, once you open up flow, the body is going to, uh, in the liver, the body's going to eliminate, so you're going to decongest. And the first thing it's going to eliminate is excessive hormone. Okay, and then the last question is, I have a client, when she lies down at night, she gets like super cold. And um, it's, it only happens when she lies down. Uh, have you ever heard about that? That that's maybe... Uh, um, I'd, need a, I'd need more of a picture for her. But the, the, be, the best thing is, is do her, my, the best thing that uh, uh, I would say is, does she get cold hands and feet? Is she cold? Is her extremities cold? Yes. Uh -huh. And her head gets cold. Yeah. Well, the first thing she could do is she could wear socks and wear a, a nightcap, number she, one. Yeah, she does all that. She but... could drink, drink warm liquid, but that, that probably is, a, and that, I'd have to see her heart graph, but it's probably a phosphorus deficiency. Give yeah. her a little fast food liquid at, at dinner. It won't hurt her. It'll uh, keep her, it'll, keep, it'll stimulate her, but she'll still be able to get to sleep. Just try two, two, two uh, uh, droppers full of fast food liquid at dinner, which is not when we usually recommend it, and just try it and see if it uh, dilates, uh, helps her circulation. And Cataplex G, which is a vasodilator. It sounds to me, not looking at her graph, that she has poor uh, vasodilation. So when you lay down, what happens with your dilation? Well, it gets more compromised. Your dilation is better when you're up and moving. Once you lay down, things collapse. So you know her uh, aortic send, send me her graph for Tuesday. Yeah, her aortic valve was really good. She had a little stenosis in the mitral and um, and a regurgitation. Well, I'll have to look at the whole thing. I want to look at her yeah, work yeah. to rest ratio and her. Okay, I will do that. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Joseph? So, yes. so this is Mary Ann. Okay, go ahead. Did you, Ligaplex 1, does it have both anterior and posterior? Um, no, the Ligaplex. Is that why you recommend? No, Ligaplex 1 is a manganese source. It's a manganese B12 source. So okay. you want to, you have to use three products, pituitrophin, mang, something with manganese, my choice is Ligaplex 1 and Cataplex E. <coughs> That's the triad. That's the so triad. why do you use a Ligaplex instead of manganese, E-manganese or manganese B12? Because most people need the, vit the more extra vitamin E and, um, and ACP, this is just a better formulation, including manganese. Plus this has the most manganese of any product in standard process. Okay, and so we, need, the we need a lot of Ligaplex equivalent? Li no, Ligaplex 2 does not have as much and Ligaplex 2 is too watered down. It's a good maintenance product, but it's not a, you know, a clinical or acute product. Or okay, thank we you. always always start with the always start with the factors that are needed the most in malnutrition. Okay. Now, usually when you're using this combination, then you're including oh, helping your knees, your ankles, your shoulders, your discs. So, and this is the best combination for that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Just Someone else. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Hi, Sue Massey. Um, Joseph, the pituitrophin and the hypothalamus, it's okay to take those continuously 
I've been taking two twice a day of um, both of them for months. They really help tremendously. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I take I take uh, Paraplex now, and I take uh, Hypothalamus every other day. Yep. Okay. I, I've been on a continuous. Also, um, two years ago, I was diagnosed with complete herniated disc, L5 S1. Must mm. have back surgery. I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand up. And after an orthopedist, and everything else, I refused to have the surgery. And I actually got healed, completely healed with the Ligaplex one, the Calcifood, the GoTo Cola, and uh, Pituitrophin. Completely yeah. fun. Wow. Good for you. Yes. Great. So it does work, especially if you yes. say for shoulders, knees, back surgery, number one. Once you have one, you're, you're going to have to have another and another and another. That inflammation, <laughs> that inflammation is coming from malnutrition. You betcha. What did uh, you say about Paraplex and what else did you take? Uh, calcium food, Ligaplex 1, GoTo Cola, and Pituitrophin. Right. Okay, Paraplex and what did it say? No, no, she's not hearing you. No. Okay, Liga so say it again, Paraplex for what? No, Ligaplex. Ligaplex, not Paraplex. Okay, Ligaplex 1. Calcium food. Huh? Joseph, can you say it? <laughs> yeah, Ligaplex 1, Calcifood, Gotacola, and Pituitrophin. Gotacola and Pituitrophin. Right. Okay, pitu Pituitrophin, is that, uh, that's, isn't that the lung thing, no? No, that's Pneumotrophin. It's his brain. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Oh, new, neurotrophin. Okay. <laughs> Neumotrophin. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, Maria, I'll just, Lynn, I'll just send her the protocols. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else with a question? Well, thank you all for being on. This was, a, I really enjoyed, uh, as I've told you in the beginning, my favorite things to talk about is the endocrine system, particularly the pituitary and the heart. So this has been a wonderful time for me. Uh, I trust you've enjoyed it and you've learned a couple of new things about the dynamics and the magnificence of the human body, especially the endocrine system. So and blessings- Everybody should get an HSR, everybody. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> blessings it to you all and Thank I will you, Joseph. talk- Thank I'll you. talk with you next Tuesday. Thank Let's you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Lynn. Joseph, thank you, Lynn.